Right, good morning everyone and welcome to the committee's ninth meeting in 2019. Could I ask everyone please to ensure that their mobile phones are on silent? Uh, we're going to move straight on to agenda item one, which is an issue on the European Union Withdrawal Act. This is a sift of the six Brexit-related instruments as detailed on the agenda. The Scottish Government has allocated the neg proce negative procedure to all six SSIs. Is the committee agreed that it is contempt with the parliamentary procedure allocated to these instruments by the Scottish Government? Yes. That's agreed. So we'll move straight on to agenda item two, which is subordinate legislation, plant health and forestry regulations. This is an item to, to consider two affirmative instruments on plant health and forestry regulations as detailed in the agenda. The committee will take evidence from the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy. The motion seeking the approval of these affirmative instruments will be considered in turn at items three and four. Members should note that there have been no representations to the committee on these instruments. I'd like to welcome from the Scottish Gab uh, Cab uh, Government, sorry, Fergus Ewing, the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, John Spears, the Senior Policy Advisor, Stuart Snap of the EU Exit Manager for Forestry Commission Scotland, Lindsay Adams, Adams sorry, I'm getting my tongue tied this morning, Anderson, the Solicitor, and Elizabeth Rutherford, the Solicitor for the Scottish Government. Cabinet Secretary, would you like to make a brief opening statement for three minutes, please? Uh, yes, thank you, Convener, and uh, thank you for making the time to consider the Plant Health EU Exit Scotland Amendment ETC Regulations 219 and the Forestry EU Exit Scotland Amendment ETC Regulations 219. I wish to move motions uh, S5M 15962 and S5M 15963 and ask that the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee recommends that both instruments be approved. The primary purpose of these instruments is to correct the deficiencies in domestic legislation dealing with the protection of plants and plant products, the marketing of forest reproductive material and governance of environmental impact assessment. These changes are necessary should we leave with the EU without a deal and are aimed at minimising disruption to trade. Currently, Scotland operates under a regime which gives effect to the EU plant health, forest reproductive material and environmental impact assessment directives implemented in Scotland through various plant health and forestry legislation. The directives set out controls on import and movement of plant and FRM material into and around the EU and for the governance of forestry related developments. These SSIs update existing implementing legislation, ensuring that it can operate effectively if the UK leaves the EU without a deal. The changes in these instruments are largely technical, such as amending the designation of the EU protected zones in the UK to the international designation of pest-free areas, ensuring that EU goods will be accompanied by phytosanitary certificates, not EU plant passports, and creation of new offences. To respect devolution and Scottish Government competency, these regulations apply to Scotland only. Similar regulations apply to England, Wales and Northern Ireland. This provides UK-wide arrangements as regards pests and diseases which do not respect borders. Regretfully, the plant health regulations were withdrawn and relayed due to a minor technical error. This change was made quickly and there was no disruption to the original instrument scheduled date. A robust import regime is key for protecting plant and tree health. These instruments define the EU as a third country, but do not prescribe that phytosanitary checks are performed on all EU imports. The need for physical checks will be assessed according to the risk of the particular import. As the phytosanitary risk will not have changed on day one, it is considered that these draft regulations are a proportionate risk-based response to maintain the current inspection regime and minimising any disruption to trade in a no-deal exit. Thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Are there any questions uh, from the committee? Stuart. Uh, thank you very much. Just a couple of technical, legal-ish type questions that it may be that uh, the Cabinet Secretary has advised. And they're just about timing. Um, the uh, advice we have uh, on the, uh, the uh, uh, plant health uh, regulations um, suggests that they will come into force at 
prior to 11pm on the 29th of March, uh, regardless of when the exit day turns out to be currently the 29th of March. Um, and I just would like to get on the record that there are no adverse effects if it comes into operation before, even if it is a short period before exit day, because I note what the Cabinet Secretary said in his introductory remarks, where he says that it defines the EU as a third country. Clearly, if exit day is delayed and the regulations come into force on the 29th of March, there is therefore a period during which the UK is within the EU but has a piece of legislation defining the EU as a third country. Now, just similarly, because I'll just do it, I want uh, on the forestry uh, regulations, uh, the draft shows them coming into force on the 1st of April uh, 2019. So therefore there would appear to be a one hour lacuna uh, between leaving the EU at 11pm and the regulations coming into force. And I again just wonder whether there is any legal concern and it's just really an opportunity to put on the record as I expect you will say, to say that this is all very interesting, but none of it matters. But on the other hand, I may hear something different. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, Kavina, I, I must freely confess that this is a scenario that I have not dwelt on uh, overly much. But um, we do have our legal advisors here, so I wonder if, if uh, Lindsay Anderson might be able to help out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I should explain in relation to the forestry instrument, the timing is slightly different because, um, as you know, the next item uh, relates to um, implementing the uh, devolution of, of forestry package. Um, and one of the issues that we, we wanted to make sure we were um, taking care of was that um, in the event that the Brexit legislation had to, um, had to come into force uh, on the event of a, a disorderly uh, exit from the EU, um, that it, it, would, it would nonetheless still mesh with um, the implementation project, which is why there's a slight difference. But um, uh, what, what we anticipate is that um, exit day uh, will be moved <laughs> <laughs> by amendment to the um, enabling powers um, in, in the event that um, the 29th of March comes and goes and we haven't, we haven't left. So um, the act that we use to make these um, uh, instruments, the EU Withdrawal Act at the moment, has this, this definition of exit day and what we anticipate is that that would be amended at Westminster um, so that it would no longer say be the 29th of March, it will be another date. So the, the way that all of the instruments um, are drafted, these ones and other uh, EU exit um, SIs are, are drafted is so that they, they, they mesh with that anticipated um, amendment. So um, these will come into force on exit day when exit day <laughs> occurs. At the moment that's still the 29th of March but clearly that, that, may, that may change. To be clear, they come into effect at 2300 hours GMT. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Stuart, are you, you happy with the answers? Okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? So my question... Oh, sorry, Jamie. Sorry. Thank you, Convener. I just, actually, I didn't have a question, but given the response I've just heard, uh, thank you, uh, Stuart. Um, can, can I just uh, double-check, then, if uh, this obviously is uh, legislation that uh, is required to correct deficiencies in domestic legislation after exit day. Can you just tell me the relevance of whether there is a deal or not? Because presumably the deal, a deal, is relevant and specifically related to trading relationships as opposed to jurisdiction of EU legislation. So in other words, if there was an exit with a deal, would that therefore mean that this legislation would no, no longer be required because we would, by default, uh, the existing EU directors be applicable under the terms of a deal, if that makes sense. Yes, thank you. I think that makes sense. Um, yes, these, these instruments are drafted purely um, to, to take care of the, the, the possibility of us leaving with no, no deal. They are, if you like, no, no, deal, no deal Brexit SIs. Um, and in the event that there is a deal, we anticipate there will be more um, legislation again passed at Westminster, which would give effect to whatever that, that deal looks like. Obviously, if I could 
predict more than that. <laughs> um, we'd have another job, but uh, <laughs> um, so yes. Yeah, so further further legislation will be required, um, and so yes, the, the, the Scottish government's position has been that a number of SSIs needed to, to be made um, in order to to mitigate against the worst. Um, deficiencies or the most damaging deficiencies that would arise in the event of a no deal Brexit. So yes, these only deal with, with, no, with no deal. We can't obviously deal with um, implementing something we don't, we don't yet know the shape or, or content of. That's fine, uh, that's very helpful, that, thank you. Does yeah. that help? Sorry, are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Cabinet Secretary, do you wish to make any closing remarks? No, thank you. Okay, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. We move straight on then to agenda item three, and this is the formal consideration of motion S5M15963 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, calling on the committee to recommend that the Plant Health EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019 be approved. Can I just ask Cabinet Secretary for you to formally move motion S5M15963? Formally moved. Sorry, did I say the numbers in the wrong order? No? Okay. I think I was right. Okay. So it is formally moved. Are there any other comments from members at this stage? So the question, therefore, is to the committee is S5M15963 be agreed to? Are we all agreed? Yes. That is agreed. Now, we're going to briefly pause the... No, we've done the second one. You said to do it now. No, no, no. So, no, we are going to move straight on to agenda item four and then pause. Okay, I did mention at the beginning uh, that the agenda items had changed as, as, and the new agenda was issued yesterday. Um, sorry? Well, we can sort that out, out afterwards, if I may, because the procedure is the same. It's just a different numbering order. So I apologise if there's any confusion, and, and, and I'll sort out that with the committee afterwards. So we, we're going to move on straight on to agenda item four, which is the consideration of motion S5M15962 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, calling on the committee to recommend that the Forestry EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019 be approved. Can I ask you, Cabinet Secretary, to formally move that motion and ask if you have any further comments you wish to make? Formally moved. Thank you. Are there any comments from members? So the question, therefore, to the committee is that motion S5M15962 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Therefore, now is the time for, for a brief pause to allow the witnesses to change. Okay, we're now going to move back into session and we're going to look at agenda item five, which is subordinate legislation affirmative forestry and land management regulations. This is consideration of two affirmative instruments on forestry exemptions and forestry land management regulations as detailed on the agenda. The committee will take evidence from the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy. The motion seeks the approval of these affirmative instruments, which will be considered in turn at items six and seven. Members should note there have been no representations to the committee on these instruments. Could I welcome again formally to the committee Fergus Ewing, the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, Catherine Murdoch, the Forestry Devolution Team, Gail Rogerson, the Forestry, Scottish Forestry Legislation Development Officer, Lindsay Adam, 
Anderson, the solicitor, and Morvan Davidson, a solicitor for the Scottish Government. Could I ask the Cabinet Secretary to make a brief opening statement? Cabinet yes. Secretary. Thank you, Ivina, for inviting me to this consideration of two affirmative forestry instruments and motions, S5M 15923 and 15922, which ask that uh, this committee recommends the regulations be approved. The Forestry Exemption in Scotland Regulations 219 and the Forestry and Land Management Scotland Act 2018 Consequential Amendments Regulations 219 are the two affirmative instruments in a package of instruments that bring into force the Forest, Forestry and Land Management Scotland Act 218. This Act completes the devolution of forestry to Scotland, transferring to Scottish Ministers responsibility for the functions currently carried out by the Forestry Commission relating to Scotland. That will happen on 1st of April. That's why these instruments come into force on that date. The package of secondary legislation as a whole puts in place supporting detail on how forestry will be regulated from April onwards and deals with transfer of property and liabilities from the forestry to Scottish ministers. The affirm affirmative instruments uh, convener before you today first set out the felling activities that can be carried out without a specific felling permission from the regulator, generally referred to as exemptions, and second, make the amendments required to primary legislation in consequence of the 218 Act. These are technical in nature, but principally aim to maintain the status quo as we commence the Act. We have taken a consultative approach to developing these instruments and a pragmatic approach to transition from one regime to the other. The aim is to ensure a smooth transition for the sector by, for example, basing the exemptions for the future on those that are currently in place. We have, though, made changes where these were necessary due to changes in the primary legislation or where there was widespread support for an improvement. I hope that's a helpful summary and I'm happy with my officials to answer your questions. So, looking around the committee, if there are any questions, I actually have one Cabinet Secretary for you just on felling um, and it's just clarification of a point, but before I do, I'd like to refer you and the members of the committee to my register of interest in a farming partnership, which does have some trees on it. So, I'm looking at specifically under felling section 4, section J, which is, covers uh, elm trees and Dutch elm disease and the fact that um, once the greater part of the crown of the tree is dead, that then allows you to fell it. I wondered why, um, just and perhaps you could clarify to me, Cabinet Secretary, why it had just been decided to do Dutch uh, elm disease and not other diseases such as ash dieback uh, that you will know all about? Um, well, well I, I have some knowledge about these, and I did uh, ask the very same question to my officials. And the reason is that the, the exemption in respect of Dutch elm disease does currently exist. And uh, as I set out in my opening remarks, uh, we wanted our main approach was continuity and to make change only where there was a demonstrable need for change, either through the Act or where there would be clear improvements. So this exemption currently exists and no firm arguments have been presented to change it. Since our, our intention was to maintain the status quo, unless there was a strong argument to do otherwise, we set out simply to maintain the, the exemption as is convener. I don't know if uh, officials have anything further to, to add in respect of this or indeed what um, perhaps if there's any useful additional information that our stakeholders made in respect of the consultation, Gail, that would be helpful. Yeah, um, we got very few comments um, through any stakeholder engagement or, co or consultation about this aspect. So there was no real reasons given to, the, to remove the exemption. Um, if we were to exempt other diseases, we would need to list them in the regulations just now. And there's no other diseases that we would, or plague species, that we would want an exemption for. Um, other diseases such as um, Phytophthora lumorum or Cholera flaxinea, which attacks ash, can be dealt with through plant health legislation um, rather than a full scale exemption within the regulations. Um, I understand that. It's just the concern, um, and the Cabinet Secretary will know this from, from driving around in the Highlands, the amount of Dutch elm disease that is relevant on the edge of roads and, and, and such like, and the danger to the public of, of, of trees falling. And that could happen in ash, and I just want to make sure that the, there is sufficient 
uh, thought, should ash dieback become a problem, that there won't be problems with felling those trees? And I, and I want to understand that within the regulation. Um, uh, there's an exemption for trees that are completely dead. So if there's a completely dead ash tree, then that could be felled under, one of, under the exemption. OK. Thank you. And thank you for that clarity on that. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, Cabinet Secretary, do you wish to make any closing remarks? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you. So we're going to therefore move on to agenda item six, which is subordinate legislation, forestry exemptions. This is the sixth agenda item and is the formal consideration of motion S5M15923 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, calling on the committee to recommend that the Forestry Exemption Scotland Regulations 2019 be approved. Can I invite you, Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, to move motion s 5 M15923, and ask if you have any further comments you wish to make. Uh, so moved, and no, I don't. Thank you. Are there any comments from the member, members? So, therefore, the question is, is motion S5M15923 be agreed? Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Therefore, I'd like to move on to agenda item 7, which is subordinate in, uh, legislation um, which is the formal consideration of S5M15922 in the name of the Cabinet Secretary for the Rural Economy, calling on the committee to recommend that Forestry Land Management Scotland Act 2018 Consequential Amendment Regulations 2019 be approved. Can I invite the Cabinet Secretary uh, to move motion S5M15922 and ask if you have any further comments to make? Uh, so moved and no comments uh, other than to say that all those hours spent preparing for the session appear to have been in vain. But that is life. Um, I, I'm, sure, I'm, sure that, I'm sure the committee welcomes your diligence in preparing for, for coming, coming before them. So the question therefore as a committee is, is to uh, ask if motion S5M15922 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Uh, then um, I'm just going to take a brief pause to allow the Cabinet Secretary and to thank you and your officials uh, for attending the meeting and the hours of preparation that you've put in, Cabinet Secretary, and, and say if you'd like to leave uh, yeah. now, we're going to move on to Agenda Item 8. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. So Agenda Item 8 for the Committee is a consideration of eight negative instruments as detailed on the agenda. No motions to annul or representations have been received in relation to these instruments. Is the Committee agreed that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments? That's agreed. So we're now going to move on to Agenda Item 9, which is the European Union Withdrawal Act 2018. Uh, we have received a consent notification into in relation to one UK SI as detailed on the agenda. It covers the common fisheries policy, fishing opportunities and discard plans. This instrument is being laid by the UK, in the UK Parliament in relation to the European Union Withdrawal Act. Are there any comments that anyone wishes to make? So, does... In, in, uh, yes, sorry, Stuart. It just... Just... just uh, um, uh, if I'm looking at the right thing, yes, I am. Um, the, the, the letter that you've received, convener, um, that uh, it, it, it just makes the observation we've yet to have sight of the final version of the regulations. It is not available in the public domain at this stage. And I just wonder if there's any update on that. Perhaps the clerks have got no. Because I think... You know, it's slight. I, I, I don't doubt anybody's good faith. This is where the two governments are working, you know, closely together, and I'm quite content at that level. But I, but I think it's appropriate to just put on the record that I have a residual concern about there's a part of what we're dealing with that's not yet available to us. And I hope that uh, that is made available in the public domain in very early course. Well, I mean, one of the options is, is therefore, to write to the Scottish Government to confirm its consent content for the consent, but asking them to notify us as soon as that, that, that missing piece of the jigsaw is received, so we can have a look at that. Um, yes. Okay, so is, is, is that the way the committee would wish to go forward? Are you, are you agreed to write to the Scottish Government to confirm its content, subject to receiving the further information as requested, um, but consent... Well, just, 
Do forgive me, convener. I wasn't necessarily suggesting we make it subject. No, 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 no. And just, I was, just I was for clarity. And I was about to say that that, that we would con we would consent to the instrument, but ask for that information to be uh, provided subsequent to the meeting. Are we agreed? Yes. We are agreed. <coughs> and I think that concludes our our business for this morning. So I'm going to formally close the meeting, and I'm going to ask the committee just to stay back for, for a moment afterwards. Thank you. I close.